How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today we're going to be taking a look at the Ledger Nano S. Now this is a cryptocurrency hardware wallet. So the general idea behind this is that instead of relying on a less secure device such as your computer or your smartphone to safely store your wallet on or instead of actually putting it in paper, actually printing it out on paper, uh, you can use this, the Ledger Nano S. It has a very well-regarded reputation, as far as I can see, within the cryptocurrency communities. So uh, I was pretty excited to get one. This one cost around about uh, $80 shipped. So they're a little bit expensive. Uh, but part of that is because there is a lot of demand for them in the past year, as you might have noticed, with the price of a lot of cryptocurrencies actually skyrocketing. So I've never opened this one up before, and I just got it today from Amazon, by the way. It, you can buy it directly from the website. It ships from France for me at the moment anyway. Uh, but it just uh, it got here a lot faster from Amazon, and it was actually cheaper. Uh, the one downside to Amazon is that there is the potential for fraud, but there's supposed to be a way that allows you to verify whether or not it has the hardware that was supposed to come with it. I have to say... This box is really tight fitting, like unreasonably tight. It's, uh, it's worse than what Apple does, but it keeps things together. I'll give them that. So here is the $80 contraption. It looks much like a regular USB drive. Seems a little pricey for a gadget like that, doesn't it? But yeah, it says Ledger on it. There's a little screen on there. We can look at that later. It comes packed in with some foam. Uh, this is very Apple-like. The way you pull the instruction panel out of the bottom. Yes, yes, this is very reminiscent of stuff Apple does. I have a, a welcome uh, instruction manual here or something. Let's see if I can get it open without ripping it. It's not the most accessible. So it says welcome on it. There's uh it's here. There's a getting started card. And there's a recovery sheet. Now these are confidential documents, it says. So at the moment they're they don't appear to have anything confidential on them though. So this one just tells you how to configure your device. And then this one has the recovery phrase on it. The recovery phrase is a total of 24 words that you write down that allows you to recover your hardware wallet. Uh, did you notice there is no anti-tampering sticker on this box? A cryptographic mechanism checks the integrity of your Ledger device internal software each time it is powered on. The secure element chip prevents any interception or, or physical replacement attempt. Ledger devices are engineered to be tamper-proof. So if you trust Ledger, like I said, they've built up a fairly good reputation over the years. Supposedly, they don't need any sort of seal to guarantee the device you received is tamper-proof. It's supposedly baked into the firmware on it. So that's interesting. Like I said, I've never heard of any anybody having any problems with Ledger, so... Like one of the highest, if not the highest recommended uh, wallet out there, even though it's hardware. So here, here we have a little bit of a keychain for the wallet part itself. I'm not sure why you'd be carrying it around that loosely. And I'm not sure exactly where it would attach. Is there a little notch in the plastic somewhere here? I suppose it just loops around like this. Oh, I suppose we put it through here. Yeah. Nope. Ah, I don't know how that works. I'll take a look at that later. Here's a lanyard for some reason and the bigger O-ring. In addition to that, we have the USB cable. So this is, uh, it looks like a micro USB. It's not <coughs> USB-C, it's standard uh, 2.0 kind of USB. It'd be 2.0 or 3.0? Probably 2.0 but I'm not sure there's a specification difference in the actual cables. There might be. I've just, uh, I forgot or I don't remember it. Wait, that's the same thing. This is how you actually connect it to your computer. You might be wondering, if you have to connect it to a computer, isn't that a potential 
to actually get something to compromise it. So that's what it looks like, and you just you can plug it in. You're supposed to go to start.ledgerwallet.com to figure out how to use it. Yeah, so this is not self-powered. I just took a look at the instructions a bit. You will have to connect it to a source of power if you want it to turn on. I think they are bringing out a self-powered one later on, but this is actually better because it is more true to being cold storage than something that has a battery in it. There you can see. Maybe you can't. It says welcome on it. Press both buttons to begin. Indirect and control the user interface. Use the left and right buttons to change values and navigate through the multiple choice lines. Press both buttons when you wish to confirm or open an application. To begin configuration, press both buttons. Configure as new device, yes. And then we have to choose a pin code. I'll probably do this some other time. Wasn't I'm not going to set it up in front of the world, I don't think. Probably wouldn't be a good idea. If we unplug it now, yeah, it goes completely off. Uh, so that's what's included in the box. Still not sure exactly how this key fob chain thing is exactly supposed to work on here. One of the more perplexing items that was included with this, like what, what are you supposed to use it for? Maybe I'm just really daft here, but... It's such a strange thing, and there's no obvious place to put it on here. And then, of course, there is the lanyard, which is much more reasonable, because obviously you can just put it right through there. So the keychain thing, I'm not, I'm not so hot about that, but at least this lanyard works. Well, I mean, I said it worked. Who knows if I can actually get it on here after all. Yeah, so there. There you go, you got a lanyard on it. Wish it wasn't so flippy floppy though. That's uh, disappointing, I have to say. Why is it so loose? I would think it would actually stay in there, you know? That's kind of the point of having this protector over it. But it's so loose that that doesn't happen. So let me see if this is a bad idea. Yes, I just bought this $80 thing. Let's try to break it now. Seriously, I'm just trying to take it out. Yeah, so that's what it looks like without the metal clip on it. Maybe I'll just bend it a little bit. Now it'll be tighter. I don't know, I'll probably end up having to bend it too far when I put it back in. That'll defeat the point of bending it to begin with. It's usually the way these things go, isn't it? Eh, I think it's a little bit tighter now. Still not the best fit. But that's what you get. For those who aren't aware how it works, uh, if you're familiar with cryptocurrency wallets, this is basically a hardware implementation of one. If you aren't familiar with cryptocurrency wallets, that's a whole other thing to get into. And to be honest, I'm probably not the best one to describe it as I'm a relative uh, newcomer to it, obviously. Otherwise, I would probably have owned one of these a long time ago. But that's what's in the box. That's what's in the box that gives you a basic idea of what initial setup looks like. Unboxing and initial setup. I did obviously didn't set up any of the actual wallets because it requires all sorts of pin numbers to be entered and recovery uh, codes to be set up. So we're not going to be doing that today.